Oh, lift your hands to the Lord. Let's thank him together right now. Thank you, Lord, for a house of miracles. Thank you, Lord, for a place where we can come and pour our hearts out to you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for every soul in this house tonight, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for miracles. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. Well, what a wonderful evening to be in the house of God. Amen. To feel his presence. And I'm happy today. Amen. It's so good to have everyone here. Amen. Brother Joshua, good to see you again. God bless you. Amen. It's always good to have Rick Lee with us. God bless him. Amen. Thank you for being here. Amen. So thankful for the way the Lord brought Sister Sharon, Sister Cynthia, and Noah to this church. Amen. We're honored to have you here. Amen. So good to have the saints of God. Amen. Appreciate your kindness uh, this weekend, all the wonderful gifts and cards and things and cakes and pies and just all kinds of good stuff. All kind of stuff that makes me need to fast for a few days. Amen. But we had a great time. Didn't we have a great time in the Holy Ghost? Amen. Sunday morning. Sunday morning, Sunday night. Sunday morning I was up here. I felt like the Lord say, you're not, you're not going to have to preach this morning now. But it wasn't hardly moving. Nothing happened. I thought, well, maybe so. And it wasn't very long till you could feel it come into this house. Such a, it was a double portion on Sunday morning. The presence of God. And I'm thankful for it. Amen. Thank you. And don't ever take for granted the moving of the Spirit of God. I and mean, there's a lot of churches, amen, that are just, uh, they wouldn't know what to do if they felt what we feel. Amen. I'm thankful to be in a high-octane, Holy Ghost, anointed church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can take your dead church and go somewhere else. Amen. I like live church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to preach tonight. Uh, what the Lord's been dealing with me about. If you got your Bible open on Matthew, the 24th chapter, and I felt a, a heavy load on me all day. When you think about the responsibility, amen, of the many souls that are represented in a house, and the souls that are watching tonight, tuned in, listening, those working, traveling, sick, skipping, sleeping, whatever. What a heavy responsibility to think that uh, we've got to be ready to meet the Lord. Amen. To be ready to meet the Lord. So I want to preach to you what the Lord's been dealing with me about since Monday. If you got your Bible, Matthew 24 and 42. The Bible says, watch. Everybody say, watch. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched. It would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. Everybody say, be ready. be ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Monday, the Lord began to deal with me about this message. This title I want to preach for just a little while. Rapture ready. Rapture ready. The only thing that matters on this planet I said the only thing that matters really on this planet is that you are ready to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't, don't get mixed up in life. Man, thinking that money and all the jobs and careers and all this 
It don't amount to a hill of beans when the trumpet sounds. All that's going to matter is that you've got the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's love Jesus right now. Let's ask God to help us in this house. Come on, prayer warriors, help me pray right now. We need God to touch us. Hallelujah, we love you, Lord. Come on, cry out to God right now. Search me, O oh Lord. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. If there's anything in my heart that's not right, I ask you to take it out right now, God. If there's any bitterness in my spirit, God, I ask you to take it out right now. God, if there's anything that would stop me from going in the rapture, I ask you to take it out right now. together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Hey, I'm going to preach. Everybody say rapture. Ready. Everybody say ready. And I talked Monday night at the conclusion of the prayer service for just a little while, and my, 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 what a Monday night prayer meeting we had. Man, but I talked for just a little bit about this subject, and I guess the way the Lord began to deal with me was I was taken back in a vision to whenever I was a young, young man, uh, born in the early 70s, and I can remember uh, back then it wasn't, called gas stations, but it was called filling stations. And they had what they call full service. And some of you born in the 80s and 90s and on forward, you, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to explain it to you. You could pull into what we would call the gas station. There'd be a man there and he'd say, how much gas do you want? You'd hand him a five. Back then, five dollars got a lot of gasoline. Five dollars, and they'd begin to pump gas, and while the gas was pumping, they'd go around and raise the hood and check the oil and check this and check that. I didn't know what all they was checking when I was a kid. Man, they would check the tires and make sure that there was air in the tires, and if it had been a while, and it was ready for you to get your tags on your car again, they would say, you need to pull over to the first bay. It's time for an inspection. Some of you wouldn't know what an inspection was. Man, but you would pull into the bay, and they would say, turn on your left blinker, turn on your right blinker, your headlights bright and dim. Amen. Brake lights, check this, check that. And, and if you checked out okay, then you'd get a little sticker about that big and they'd put it on your windshield and you could get your license and amen, you were ready for the road for one more year. Amen. And it was thinking about that, that the, the reason years ago that it was so important that uh, your vehicle was road ready and that uh, everything worked is because in the old days we didn't have little telephones that went in our pocket. Man, when you started a trip back in the day, uh, you used to prepare for the worst. Amen. When I was a boy, I remember going even on small trips to go see my grandmother in Mountain View, Arkansas. And we would, we would take water just in case a radiator hose blew. And you take oil just in case something went bad on the oil pressure. You take power steering fluid. Maybe we were just poor, but I think everybody was like that. Hey, man, if it was cold, we would take blankets just in case the car died and you needed to stay warm for a while. Hey, man, but uh, technology has got us to the point where we don't have to prepare for anything anymore. Hey, man, just take off down the road and if... Uh, the car breaks down, you just call the wrecker, call your brother, call your dad, call somebody. Amen. There's no worry. There's no preparation for trips anymore. It's just take off and go. 
But back in the day, if you were to break down, you might be there a long, long time. Amen. Everybody that came down the road couldn't help you back in the day because they didn't have a phone either. And so I began to think about how we have come to a, a generation that does not really understand how to prepare for anything. I remember in the summer times, my grandmother would go out to the garden and bring in tomatoes and all the, the vegetables, and it wouldn't be very long till the stove and the, would heat up the kitchen, and she was canning tomatoes and canning okra and canning everything. I think she canned fish, I believe. I don't know. Canned all kinds. You know what she was doing? She was preparing for a winter when there wouldn't be a garden outside. Amen. And, and you know, we, I, I, I'm just, I hate to harp on it, but uh, when, you, when everything you want, you can walk into a store and it's just readily available. It, it kind of, you, you lose something. I said you lose something. Uh, it was just a few months ago that uh, some of you young people experienced something you had never experienced before. Walmart closed on you. He, man, Walmart ran out of toilet paper and ran out of milk and, well, praise the Lord. You thought it was a crisis, but let me tell you, just a, a generation ago, people knew how to prepare for things. Uh, Hey Amen. They, they, they knew that winter time was coming. They knew that there would be times when things would break down and, and they rationed things and they took care of things. They cared about things. Uh, amen. They were, well, praise God. Amen. Thank God for 2020. And I don't have one problem with Walmart. Uh, amen. But I do have a problem with people that don't know how to prepare for anything in life. Amen. We have come to a generation where people don't prepare for problems. They react to problems. I said they don't prepare, they just react when the problem happens. They run out of money, guess what? The bank made it where they can go into the other side. Where back in the day, you took your checkbook and you figured it up and if there was only $10, you didn't spend $50. Because if you tried to, there was no money there. Amen. You prepared your life, uh, amen, and you understood uh, that things won't always be like they are, uh, amen. I come to preach to the church tonight uh, that you got to prepare to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. We've seen it time and time again, a generation that reacts to trouble, but they don't know how to prepare for trouble. Well, hallelujah anyhow. I said I feel like preaching right now. Amen. When they walk through the door and trouble is upon them, they are reacting because they did not prepare. And thank God for mercy. And God meets people at the altar and he heals people and he feels people, but that's not a very good plan. The best plan is to prepare your heart for what's going to happen. The Bible teaches us that man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. What are you preaching about? I'm preaching about when there's not any trouble and you're preparing for a trip. You get on this altar. I said, you get on this altar uh, and you start checking some things out. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord together right now. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be ready to meet the Lord. I'm, there is a trip that everybody on our planet wants to take. 
He meant nobody wants to be lost. They may say they want to be lost, but when they get on their deathbed, oh yeah, oh yeah, when they get on their deathbed, you know what they're going to want? They're going to want somebody to come pray for them. Hey Amen. The man that come up with evolution uh, that said there was no God uh, when he was in his last few days of his life, you know what he started saying? Uh, there is a God. I realize, I realize uh, that there is a God. Uh, hey Amen. Uh, I come to preach on a Wednesday night. It's time to get prepared for a trip that we're all going to take. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I was thinking about my birthday the other day and uh, actually yesterday. Appreciate Sister. Fabiola, she called my wife, wanted us to go eat at their restaurant. I got, got me a meal for my birthday last night, another meal. Got another birthday cake. And then they got a custom in Mexico, I guess. They sneak up behind you when they're singing happy birthday with a big old cup of white something. I don't know what it is. When they're through singing, they put it all over your face. And anyway, it tasted pretty good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. But I want to preach, amen, that every one of us are going to be heading to somewhere. Amen. And if you make it to heaven, it will be because you prepared and you made yourself ready. There will be nobody just accidentally nobody's going to accidentally fall into the gate and say how did I get to heaven uh, no the, everybody that makes it there will be because they got a made up mind uh, they got a determination uh, if I got to walk away from my family uh, if I got to change careers uh, if I got to lose everything in this world uh, I am going to heaven Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus tells us to be ready, to make ourselves ready, to be ready for this rapture or this catching away of the church. Amen. In order to get ready to meet the Lord, we have to obtain salvation well, you're not going to make it all the way down this trip without obtaining salvation salvation is the deliverance from sin and the consequences of sin when you get delivered from sin and the consequences then you can enter into the gates uh, amen the bible tells us that all Everybody say all. All have sinned and come short. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin, everybody say payday. Payday when you are a sinner is eternal death. Amen. Salvation from the Lord delivers us from the consequences of sin. Praise the Lord. Without being delivered from these consequences, we're not going to make it on this trip that we want to make. Amen. I am going to preach what it takes to make it to heaven. Amen. If you have sins that are not forgiven, you will not finish the trip. Praise the Lord. If you have sins that are not forgiven, you will not finish this trip. Amen. It don't matter how faithful you are to the house of God. It don't matter how much money you give. It don't matter who you know. If you do not get your sins forgiven, you will not make heaven your home. 
Amen. I, I, I'm preaching. I realize uh, to, uh, to the choir probably. Amen. But I'm also preaching to a snowflake generation. Amen. That can't take the heat that comes from the Word of God. Uh, amen. But if you're going to be saved, uh, if you're going to be saved, uh, you got to quit blaming everybody else for your sin. It's his fault, their fault, her fault. No, the reason I'm a sinner is because I'm a sinner. The reason I'm a sinner is because I am humanity and we have all sinned. And this is what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. My Lord, you can't preach about that. Oh, yeah, you can. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves. Everybody say thieves. I'm going to get back to that after a while. Nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. To be rapture ready, you have got to have a solution for your sin problem. Praise God. To be rapture ready, something's got to happen that will take care of your sin problem. Amen. And the man who had the keys to the kingdom, this is what he preached on the day that the church was started. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There has got to be a born-again experience to take care of your sin problem. I'm going to preach doctrine to this church. I said I'm going to preach doctrine to this church. We are not ecumenical, which means we believe everybody's going to heaven. I do not subscribe to that theory that they can go to heaven how they want to, and we go how we want to, and they go how they want to. I believe we're going to, if we're going to make it, I said, if we make heaven, it's going to be because we did it like he wanted us to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We can't get mixed up in this different kind of Christianity and different kind of salvation. There is no other salvation. By one spirit are ye baptized into one body. If you didn't get the Holy Ghost, you ain't a part of the body. Oh, yeah, I'm going to preach it tonight uh, because God's coming back. Uh, uh, he's coming back for a church just like the one he started. When he started his church, uh, it was a spirit-filled church. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. I ain't talking about the words of the Pope. Praise God, I ain't talking about the words of the watchtower or your bishop in Atlanta. I'm talking about the words of Jesus Christ that said, marvel not that I say unto you, there's got to be an experience. The wind bloweth where it listeth or where it wants to. Jesus said, Thou hearest, 
the sound thereof, but you cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You hear the sound, the phonea, the language. Everyone that is born of the Spirit will begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Oh, I feel like preaching right now. Uh, hey, man, we're not just a little bit different from other people. We're a whole lot different than other people. Uh. I'm telling you, when you open up that book of Acts uh, and you begin to read uh, what the first church was, uh, hey, we still got a long ways to go. I said we still got a lot to, to attain. We're not going to back up now. I said we're not going to back up now. It's time to... It's time to... Lord, help me. I'm trying to shout and preach at the same time. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost tonight. And I'm thankful nobody had to tell me I got the Holy Ghost. Because when I got it, it was like fire shut up in my bones. I'm telling you the new thing in our world is uh, you come up to the front, you read a prayer that somebody wrote, uh, you accept Christ as your personal Savior, and then somebody tells you, you just received the Spirit. Well, I don't feel any different. Let me tell you, if you don't know when you got it, how are you going to know when you lose it? I'm telling you, I know uh, when I ain't feeling right. I said, I know when I ain't feeling right. I know when I need to get back to the altar. You want to know why? Because I know what I felt on that Sunday night when I got the Holy Ghost. I got the real Holy Ghost. Come on, let's love Jesus right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for something that's real. Amen. Paul writing to the church in Rome. Amen. He was writing to a spirit-filled church. And he said, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Amen. If people don't believe in the Holy Ghost, they don't belong to Jesus. Boy, praise God. Praise the Lord. I feel like I'm preaching against every devil in this city right now. I rebuke every false doctrine. I rebuke every false doctrine in our city. I pray that God opens up the eyes of every. Hey, man, it hurts me uh, when I see good people that love the Lord uh, and they go to church on Sundays uh, and they're lied to uh, and they're patted on the head. Uh. Was talking to somebody the other day uh, and I began to tell them uh, uh, that if you sat down with a Trinitarian uh, and you really explained to them what it means to be Trinitarian, they would tell you, well, I'm not that. Praise the Lord. Jeez. If you really, that's why you better know the word of God. That's why you better have a Bible and you better wear it out. Hey, man, you, we're not here enough. I, I can't teach everything. Uh, hey, man, you've got to get the word in your heart. Uh, you got to fall in love with it uh, or somebody will confuse you. Hey, man. Uh, you sit down and explain to people 
that think they are Trinitarian, that in order to be Trinitarian, you got to believe that there are three persons co-equal, which means they got the same amount of power. Now, I don't know about you, but you can, can you just imagine what it'd be like to have three pastors that had the equal power? <laughs> oh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be drama. Because you know what would be happening? They would all be trying to get you to listen to them. Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. But when you begin to preach the real Bible to people, and you say the Bible says that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Hey, I got Bible for this. I, you, you ain't got to worry about somebody talking me out of the Bible. Huh? My Bible said God was manifest in the flesh. So when Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. He's not lying. He's God manifest. Praise the Lord. Boy, I feel like preaching. Maybe I just feel like rebuking every false thing in our city right now. Hey, man, uh, you, you cannot be Trinitarian and believe that Jesus is just equal with one spirit and another spirit. If you believe that, then he, he lied in Matthew 28, 18. I, if that's right, Jesus lied. Oh, I can't believe he said, oh, you can believe he's saying it. Jesus said all power. What does that mean to you? Well, whose report are you going to believe? Jesus, which is the express image of God. If there was three co-equal, whatever you call it, deities, the Bible said the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she can see. Not the one that they called the Father. <laughs> You're talking about confused. They are confused. You want to know why? Because they figured out their own doctrine. But thank God. Thank God we once were in darkness. But God has brought us into this marvelous light. Praise God. Lift your hands to the Lord together. Hey Amen. We're getting ready for a trip. Hallelujah. Isaiah said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, that child that was born in Bethlehem and laid in a manger, uh, he shall be called the mighty God. Hey, I'm trying to get us ready. Uh, that little baby uh, that was born in Bethlehem uh, would be called the everlasting uh, father. Which means there ain't, there ain't three uh, and there ain't two, uh, but there's one God uh, who is a, above all and through all and in you all. Hear, O oh Israel, the Lord our God. I said the Lord our God is one. Come on, let's love Jesus right now. Shatala Baba Hasata Yala Bahoya. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Why is it so important that we know this? Why is it important that you know that there's only one God? I'll tell you why. Because see, Jesus said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Why is it important on a Wednesday night that you preach the oneness of God? Because we're getting prepared. We're getting everything ready because uh, we're heading on a trip. Come on, let's love the Lord together right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 You think it's important now that you understand the oneness of God? Praise the Lord. If he said you're going to die in your sins, except you believe that he is, that makes it important on this trip that I get this all right. Well, hallelujah. The very, uh, you could say the block, the building block of Christianity is that God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Hey man, you can't build on a man-made doctrine. If you build on a man-made doctrine, you're building on sand. And one of these days, uh, the storm is going to come. Uh, and everything that's not built upon Jesus. God, open up the eyes of our city. God, open up the eyes of every pastor in this city. God, open up the eyes of good men and women that love you. Hey, I'm, in, I, I'm trying to intercede uh, for a mixed up city that I live in. Praise God. Everybody say, I want to be rapture ready. got to have the Holy Ghost. I said you got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Being baptized in titles ain't going to help you. I said it ain't going to help you to be baptized in titles. We're not here to beat anybody up. We're not here to look down on people. We're here to sound the alarm. He said, I'm going to make a watchman on the wall. And if the watchman does not sound the alarm and the enemy comes in, uh, you're going to be in trouble and I'm going to be in trouble. Amen. Amen. I feel like preaching. I, want, I don't want to start on this trip. I want to go all the way. Lord, help me to get started on this message. <laughs> In order to be rapture ready, we got to live a holy life. Tell you, if you're not living a holy life, you're not rapture ready. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm here to tell you if you're not living a holy life 
and the rapture happens tonight, you're lost. I'm not judging people. I'm preaching the gospel. The Bible said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. The first part says, follow peace with all men. This word follow literally means that you need to be chasing or pursuing peace. Now, I don't believe he was saying the last part of it, the holiness, is the only one that ain't going to see the Lord. I believe when he wrote this, he meant the ones that ain't chasing after peace. Well, pressure is getting quiet in here. Hey, man, follow peace. The Bible teaches that you need to be pursuing peace. Peace with everybody. Without which. Boy, it's getting quiet in here. Without which, no man is going to see the law. Do you know what that means? Can I just explain to you the implications of what that few little words mean? That if somebody has ought against you, the Bible teaches you to leave your gift at the altar and you go make it right and then you come back and you present your gift. The Bible said follow Pete, which means you pursue peace with all men. Oh boy, we're going to go to a new level. I'm trying to get people where you don't just get started on the trip and get offended halfway, fall off at the first exit, and end up in hell. I, I, I want you to go all the way, but the Bible said you got to pursue peace, which means if somebody has a problem with you, just the opposite of ignoring it, we think we're saints because we ignore. Oh, praise God. Let me look at the back wall for a minute. The Bible teaches us to pursue peace. Which means that Brother Geed's got a problem with me. And I find out I don't block his number. But what I do is, I don't rest until me and him are reconciled. I am pursuing a peace. Boy, boy, I feel like we were shouting over one God. We were shouting over speaking in tongues, shouting over the Holy Ghost. You know what you need to be shouting over? that your name is written down. Oh, yeah. You need to be shouting. Praise the Lord. Boy, this is something else. Pursue. Well, I'll just ignore what I can't fix. You're not going to see the Lord. What a cheap way to be lost. I'm going to get on the wall again, I guess. What a cheap way to burn in hell forever. Well, you don't know what they said. Who cares what they said? The Bible said you're not going to see the Lord if you don't chase after it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That means your grudge is going to cause you to not make it all the way. 
you're going to have a flat tire on the trip. And when everybody else walks through the gate, you and your grudge will be hanging around, left behind, waiting for the white throne judgment where God says, if you didn't forgive, you're not forgiven. My Lord, the easiest thing in the world is to just say, I'm sorry. It don't cost one nickel. You, I'll prove it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you. Watch this. This is all the money in my pocket right now. Has anybody got a nickel I can borrow? Yes, Lord, I'll give it back to you or put it in the offering. Oh, we got one. Yes, Lord. I want to show you something. I'm going to put this nickel in my pocket right here, okay? Y'all, this is not a magic trick. You see it? Is it a real nickel? Real nickel. Okay, watch. It's in my pocket. Show you how easy this is. I'm sorry, Brother James. I, I don't know what happened. If you feel like it was me, I'm sorry. Let's just, let's go to heaven. What do you think? Sound like a deal? All right, let's check. Praise God, it's still there. Wow. What a great investment. I've been here longer than you. <laughs> Yeah, you were started when I didn't know how to preach. <laughs> I've been around a long time now. I've learned how to discern spirits. <laughs> I've learned how to try the spirit, see whether it be of God or not. <laughs> and the little spirit that says, guess what they did? <laughs> hey, call me right after church. I got something really good to tell you. <laughs> you know what that is? That's the spirit that's going to take you right to hell. Well, I got to get started. I got four more minutes to preach. Praise God. Let me tell you something about peace. The Bible said pursue it or follow after it. But you know what? This is what the Lord dealt with me about today. People only Pursue things that they want. I don't know what y'all are waiting for. That's a revelation from Jesus to me. The Bible said, follow peace. Pursue, chase peace. But if you don't like peace, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I could tell you a story about a real pretty girl that was 16 years old one time. And I was 17 years old. I started pursuing her. No, she was 15, I was 16, I think. Had this nice, shiny red car. Man, put some rims on it. And blacked out the windows. and Rev it up every now and then. But I was pursuing something not because it was ugly. Not because I did not want it. <laughs> so, maybe this is dating 101. I've never seen anybody chase something that they didn't want. I don't know what you're waiting for. But you chase things that you want. And people that like drama... People that love to be the victim, the last thing they're going to do is pursue peace. Because if you catch it, then you love everybody. And everybody loves you. Well, praise God. I hate drama. <laughs> 
Praise the Lord. That's why I like on them text messages now you can see the first couple lines of it. <laughs> you know, it's just like a, like a, the beginning of the book. You <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Hey, man, there's some text messages I don't even want to read. Because I, I see, you know, and, and one of them is, this is an emergency. I've never seen anybody text in an emergency. Well, hallelujah. I've seen emergencies. People are like, They're calling that one. Bah, 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 bah. Somebody get a hold of This is an emergency. Somebody took my parking place. And... Yes, the Lord. You can tell your daddy nobody got his seat tonight. That's <laughs> the Lord. Praise God. I'm telling you, if you want drama, you can get it. There is an endless supply. We got a school. We got a school. We got a church. We got children. We've got women. We've got men. We've got people. We got some expecting babies. We got some that need to kick some babies out. Got some that need to whip babies? Well, man, I was going to preach a long, beautiful message, and I can't get started. But you got to follow peace if you're going to make it to heaven. And the Bible said, and holiness. Everybody say, and holiness. That's a bad word in 2020, but it's a good word to me. Let me tell you something. Holiness connects with following peace. Do, do, do you know why they put those right together? It's because if you can't forgive somebody and you don't want to resolve a problem, you're not representing God. There's something dark inside of you. God is a holy spirit. The reason we need to live holy lives is because we represent a holy God. And if you don't want peace with all men, you are as unholy, you are as unholy as a child trafficker. You're as evil. It's the same spirit. It is against God. It's the anti-Christ. It's against God. God that sat on the cross and said, forgive them for they know not what they do. The spirit that says, I will not forgive is anti-Christ. Trying to get us rapture ready. Praise the Lord. Might have to do an overhaul. Board out seven quarters. New rings. Praise God. Help us. Praise the Lord. And it ain't just an inward holiness, but there's also an outward holiness. We know the Bible cares about what we look like. The Bible said that we would dress modest. You know what the word modesty means? Is that you would not draw attention to yourself by your epidermis. Praise the Lord. How do you like that? Biology majors. In the very beginning of the Bible, 
the Bible said God clothed them, which meant he covered them. Well, that's an old message. No, this is a we're going to finish the trip message. We're not going to start and piddle around and run out of gas. We're going to go. The Bible said that it's an abomination for a woman to wear that which pertaineth to a man. And the Bible said it's the same thing for a man to wear that of a woman's clothes. We well, are just old and weird. No, we read the Bible. Well, that's just your opinion. I don't have an opinion other than I love this book. The only opinion I got is, is that that book is right. Let every man be a liar and let that book be true. Well, wine is 99%. Do it like that. I don't have to explain why they do that. They got to explain to me how they got rid of the Bible. Well, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Will y'all give me like 90 seconds? Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach for 90 seconds. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? The Bible said in tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord. Y'all remember me reading a verse just a little bit ago that said that a thief. <laughs> that a thief will not obtain the kingdom of God. And then God said, you're a robber. Okay, I'm going on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read one more thing and I'm quitting, I promise. I know I don't promise, but I'm. I'm pretty convinced. This is what the Bible said in Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and everybody say this, all liars. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. I'm telling you as a pastor, and I'm about to quit, I'm concerned about people that can tell lies and act like nothing happened. Well, praise God. Let me tell you, lying is a habit people start. Well, praise the Lord. But the Bible said, you know, we can say, well, it wasn't a bad lie. The Bible said all lies. It was just a little, you know, the only reason I said I've got 5,000 in the banks because he said he had 4,000. So I had to say I had more than him. It was just a little white lie. It's going to turn into a little red lie. Let, let me tell you something. It's, the law says, and your pastor will tell you, you've got the right to remain silent sometimes you would be blessed to just learn how to just remain silent well did you go to town yeah I did no you didn't wouldn't it be wouldn't it be dumb to be in hell and you're burning and you're biting the guy next to you and he's biting you and he says, like they do in prison, what are you here for? <laughs> well, <laughs> Ananias, <laughs> what are you here for? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, God, help us to be people of truth. Praise God. I'm done. Praise the Lord. I feel like I ran into a brick wall. <laughs> 
is the law. If you can't tell the truth, you need to get the Holy Ghost. Hey, I don't care if you're lying to customers, you need to get the Holy Ghost. If you're lying to your boss, you need to get the Holy Ghost. If you're lying to the pastor, you really need to get the Holy Ghost. Stand together with me. I'm done. Praise the Lord. Amen. I feel a heavy responsibility on my spirit. Get people ready to meet the Lord. Amen. Why don't we all come stand around this front? Amen. 90 seconds. We'll dismiss. Maybe. Amen. I just I feel the Lord working on people. You know, sometimes you can make more money if you lie. Sometimes you can get a better deal if you lie. I'm going to tell you a true story and I'm quitting. My lawnmower messed up. John Deere lawnmower, almost new. I couldn't believe it. Bell wouldn't turn. I called John Deere, told him, I said, man, what's wrong with this thing? It won't go. The service man said, it's the clutch going out, I'm sure. Just bring it down here, trade it in. I said, well, they ain't going to give me nothing for it if it's broke. He said, don't say nothing. This was the John Deere man. He said, don't say, this is what people do. And they, they're going to give you a low price because they, they assume you're lying to them. Or you're not telling. So th that's why they're lowballing you. He, this is just how we do it. So I called the man said, I need a new John Deere. And they took it. I signed the papers. I come to the church. And I was laying right over there by that chair. Now, I'd done what a man told me to do. The employee told me to do. And I was laying right over here about 8 o'clock at night. And I was praying. And I felt pain in my spirit. And I felt God speak to me. And he said, you're going to mess up your blessing. I had the salesman's phone number. His name is Sam. I text Sam. I said, Sam, I'll buy the new one, but you ain't getting my old one. So I went and got the new lawnmower. I called him. I said, I need you to look at this old one. The guy in the back that talked me into line. I told him, you need to look at this, figure it out. He said, well, I'm going to run the serial number on it. He said, well, you know, the, the ignition switch has a recall on it, so we're going to go ahead and replace that before we do anything. And uh, they replace it, and I waited like a month. Nobody called me. So I called, and I said, hey, what, what's going on with the lawnmower? He said, we replaced the switch, and it runs fine. <laughs> Clutch ain't broke. Well, guess what? We got two good lawnmowers now. I thought, how many people mess up their blessing by not having an ear where they can hear God speak to them? Hey, we can make excuses. I'm telling you, the employee told me how to do that. But I called him back and said, I, I ain't doing that. God will take my blessing away. You know what God did? He gave me more blessings. You, I'm not going to say you make a bad decision. Everybody makes bad decisions. Well, maybe just your pastor every now and then, once in a blue moon. No, everybody makes bad decisions. You say things to people you shouldn't say. You text things you shouldn't text. But you got to have a prayer life and a relationship with God where God can deal with you. And when you get down and pray, God says, you shouldn't have said that to that man. You shouldn't have said that to her. You need to... Well, praise God. God, 
let me be so close to you that if I get off track, I can hear your voice. God, let me be so close to you that if I begin to sway to the left or, or to the right, I can hear that still small voice say, you better get your phone and make it right. Come on, let's pray together, church. Come on, I feel blessings. I feel God want to unleash some blessings in this place. God, let us be rapture ready. Purify me. Wash me brand new, God. Cleanse me, oh God. Yeah, Come on, join up with somebody right now. <laughs> Come on. Come on, let's just cry for a moment. <laughs> Come on. Church. Come on, the decisions we're making are eternal.